Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. In today's interview, as a part of Kaizen Dental Success Stories podcast, we are going to interview Dr. V. Srinivasan. Dr. V. Srinivasan has been a teacher in dentistry for over 27 years and is currently the principal at Bharti Vidya P. Dental College, Navi Mumbai. But we are not interviewing him for his academic proficiency we are interviewing him since he was among the few who went into the speciality of oral medicine with the focus on consulting most of the graduates of oral medicine at that point of time would get into general dentistry but he was among the few who stuck with it and continues with his speciality so we are keen to know the points which has led him to keep on consulting in this particular field. So let us begin today's interview. Hi, welcome, sir. So the first question Hello. I would like to ask you is how did you get into OMDR? Was it by chance or by choice? Uh, you can say by chance or divine design. Uh, it's God's will, if you can put it some way, or is a choice that you know, chance made for me because uh, the way oral medicine is uh, sort of taught and projected even in those days 30 years back, in, in fact, even worse 30 years back, uh, it was not a branch that most people would select by choice. Okay. And so it was with me. But what happened was that unknown to me, I, I was doing so well in the medical subjects as well as the subject of oral medicine. And in those days to join a specialty, you needed to top the subject in that particular top the subject. So once I topped the subject and I found that I was second highest or third highest in certain other subjects, uh, the one subject that was immediately available to me to do my MDS was oral medicine. And so without wasting time, I joined oral medicine. But when I joined oral medicine, I realized how little was known of that speciality. It was a new speciality. It was joined to oral radiology and most practitioners of oral medicine were not very comfortable with oral medicine. And the more I, time I spent in oral medicine, I realized that this was a speciality which required to be taken and practiced as a speciality. So you ended up so enjoying it basically as you started. Oh yes, I enjoyed it. In fact, uh, it's, the first time I, the first case I took up as a postgraduate student was actually a case of uh, oral pemphigus. Okay. And I found that most teachers uh, had initially thought this was probably a case of uh, HIV or AIDS. We did this uh, test because that was what was in fashion in those days. And then I went to a dermatology clinic and I found that at each place, there was a lot of hesitancy. Most people were not sure of what they were doing and how to manage it because skin specialists were comfortable with skin disease and oral physicians are not still got comfortable with oral lesions. And so uh, with, as days passed by and newer and newer cases came by, including some cases of oral tuberculosis, which was diagnosed eventually. So I okay. began to realize that this was a speciality with huge potential and uh, somehow uh, was seen as a branch which was non-clinical or as a branch which was not exciting. I in fact found it far more exciting and far closer to the dream of many dentists uh, of uh, being as close to general medicine or as it could get in dentistry. So to that extent, it fulfilled my earlier, uh, you know, accident. That is my dentistry itself was not a choice. It was medicine which was the first choice. And so when I got into dentistry... So you got closer to your first dream, basically. Exactly. So it brought me closer to my first choice. Uh, but sir, when you started consulting, so you enjoy all these cases and everything. Did you find acceptance among dentists? Because usually when a patient walks into a clinic, they just try to tell the patient it is just a lesion, there won't be anything. 50% people will just prescribe something like Kinocot and just try to push the patient away. Uh, people are not very keen on doing it. So how did you uh, start convincing dentists? to start treating uh, such patients? How did it happen? Yeah. So actually it's like this. So once I uh, became a teacher at Government Dental College and 
I found some of my former students referring me cases to Government Dental College. I realized that whatever I had thought that there is a space or there's a place where oral medicine can be practiced, that uh, was established by the reference that I was getting. But that was in the college. So Providence, again, chance against played a uh, was sort of part in my life. And for various reasons, I had my, my job at Government Dental College could not be continued. Okay. When I, it was not continued, I decided uh, to use this to uh, sort of uh, explore uh, what uh, potential there is in oral medicine. So I went to a lot of places and there was a lot of initial hesitancy, a lot of questions in their minds. And uh, I realized that the reason why people were not uh, referring it and they were trying to push away the patient was because there were no clear solutions being offered by the specialty to most dentists. So because most people felt that Anyway, you have to just prescribe some steroids or anyway, TM joint is so difficult to handle. So there were a lot of these misconceptions. And uh, once I started going as consulting, as a consultant, a, not only they stopped pushing around cases, they were very happy to send it to me. But in almost none of these oral medicine consultations still date, I have ever, even if I visit a clinic, I occupy their chair time, I use their dental assistant, they don't want a single paise as charges, okay. consultation charges for using the clinic space. So I collect the entire fees and come back. And that's pretty good. Usually it would be in the range of 2000 odd now. But in those days when I started, it used to be 300, 500, it used to be a small amount, uh, a lot of years back. But the whole idea was that they valued your service because once they tasted what benefit and what value you can bring into your diagnosis and management of patient. When the patient gave you the certificate, then uh, consultants really didn't have a problem. The, the general dentist did not have a problem calling it. But there was a period of time when they would uh, have a lot of doubts and they would give you one case. So when you get that one case, you should be good enough to manage to win the confidence of that person because uh, it's such a, such a complex branch that uh, the trust may not be given. Like if you fail in one root canal, because root canal is so well established, you might still be called for the second root canal because they say, okay, maybe it was a difficult case, maybe instrument broke or something. But in oral medicine, since the branch itself is a new branch, if you fail once, then they just don't lose faith in you. They lose faith in the branch itself. So in that sense, it was uh, something which, where you had a lot of responsibility for, but I think I had a good time and I could, establish my practice, uh, not just in Thani where I practiced. I'm grateful and I put on record my gratitude to Dr. Dinesh Chain, who runs a wonderful practice as well as a lab in Bandra. And so I could uh, sort of go and visit dentists and get referrals from Bandra to his clinic. And I also had the you know good fortune of being consultant at Dr. Ashok Dubli's place. So I had a lot of Bombay crowd coming to it. And I have had the joy of having patients coming to me from Bombay, that is from South Bombay to Thani because some dentist felt that I would be the best person to take care of the, their patients. So to that extent, I live a, a life of some satisfaction. But uh, did you find any difficulties with the patients? Patient acceptance, patient willing to come and everything, how was it? No, because most patients who did, who did need to come were people who had already tried a lot of places, were extremely frustrated and we're looking at some kind of solution that could be provided. So as long as that solution is being provided, then the patient really doesn't feel the, uh, so the pinch of uh, traveling that distance and uh, coming to you. So the key is whether you're able to provide or give satisfaction to that patient of yours, because that patient is going to go back to the referring dentist and tell him. So uh, the key is that when you want to practice, uh, you must be in a position to give what is known as predictable results. That is, I often commit to, or not often, it's a matter of rule that I set myself a target. When a patient comes, I say, look, I will be treating you and I expect you to get significantly better, at least 50% better in say one month's time or three months time. And I expect you to get you know completely all right in so and so period of time. But, so I give uh, them some kind of commitment. Yeah. So you are able to do that commitment because you're experienced. What about uh, if someone who's just passed out OMDR and is not very confident? So, yes. so should that, they be able to give such so a they, commitment and how would, would they do? To an extent, they would be able to. If they were to do their post-graduation, 
the way, say, the other clinical specialities do. Uh, so, say, suppose an orthodontist were to finish his MDS. Uh, because he has cases that he has not just treated once, but he has followed up for a period of two and a half years. So, he has some amount of confidence. Now, the more the number of cases you take up, and the more the number of cases you take to a point where the patient is satisfied and his presenting problems are significantly reduced or completely eliminated, unless you have the document over. Unfortunately, oral medicine training focuses a lot on radiology and you know some aspects of surgery. So many times in our oral medicine examination, our main case or long case as they call it, is a case like amyloblastoma, which is actually a surgical case. Rarely is a leukoplakia or a lichen planus taken up and its treatment and how they have managed it over six months. What is your document of cases of oral medicine cases where you medically treat a TM joint or medically treat a lichen planus or a pemphigus is usually not emphasized enough in our specialty. So basically, a, a while approaching MDS, they have to change it. Their approach towards MDS has to change. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, radiology is easier to master because as I said, you can keep looking at views you can keep looking at radiographic interpretation and learn because even after you finish the course. But talking to your patient, interacting with the patient, understanding your patient, there's a lot of psychosomatic component in oral disease. So your communication skills and your empathy skills and your ability to read body language, facial expressions as they give you your give their history, the way they twitch their face when they are palpating the masseter, these are small points that uh, are going to make all the difference in your final diagnosis and your ability to communicate the treatment and manage them to comply with the treatment. So these are certain areas that are not really spelled out clearly in the program. And so to that extent, if you can do that, uh, you will be able to assure something. Maybe I would be more assured, but that's always a case. Whenever there's a senior practitioner, he's going to be more confident about his uh, skills than a junior. But a junior could also be fairly confident if he's able to deliver results. Like, I felt when I finished my GDC, why did I feel confident? Because they were referring me patients and they were referring me cases because there was some value that I provided to them as a teacher. So many people who work in colleges, including teachers, should, should be in a position to actually develop a brand value to the kind of work that they're doing. Okay, now, uh, so this is about after you get into MDS. Now imagine a young dentist, okay, he's given his neat exam. And many people look at OMDR or oral pathology as a last choices, basically. So what traits do you think they should think they should have personally to be sure that yeah. once I do OMDR, I'll be successful. One, you told about communication skills. Think, Is there anything else? I, yeah. So I tell you, as I said, I think both uh, you have a video on a selection of MDS as a specialty. And uh, I think as Dr. Rajiv Chitkupi, a periodontist, so periodontists are doing a good role in uh, guiding uh, young uh, aspiring uh, students to choose the brand. But they, what both of you would say, and what I would also say is that you have to look at your aptitude and your interests and not, uh, not necessarily what you think uh, the kind of money that you're going to make, because money is going to come uh, only on a confluence of certain you know, abilities, including your intrinsic ability to do well in your specialty, the way you present it and so on and so forth. So it's a complex uh, sort of combination which ensures money. It's not that you join and become an orthodontist and you become rich. That's not going to happen. But for oral medicine, you must have uh, an enthusiasm to solve problems. You must be very good at communication. You must, there must be a certain philosophical, spiritual bent of mind because you're going to see a little more pain than an average dentist is going to see. And you must and a little more frustrated patients also. Sorry, they'll be more frustrated also those patients because they would have gone to other places. Right, correct, correct. So you must be able to sort of empathize. So that uh, that also brings us. And you must really be ready to read. If if reading you know troubles you too much, see if you look at any other specialty in dentistry, it's about forty percent or forty five percent skill, about 35 40 percent knowledge, and twenty percent attitudinal you know communication, empathy, etc. In dentistry, you could still manage to be a good dentist. But uh, in oral medicine, about a big chunk is your communication and uh, say almost 40% is your attitude and communication. 40% is knowledge and it's only 20 or 10% which is skill. So you really, really need to be ready to read, 
play out things, work out patterns, combinations, uh, be a little creative. So with a certain amount of knowledge and good communication skills, you can become a good oral physician, but you must be also a little creative, think a little out of the box. So if you do all that, you can become really an excellent oral physician. So uh, you need to have that in you. If you have that in you, only then will you bring value to the specialty and you can become successful. Otherwise, that MDS would be just a degree because I feel in many ways MDS oral medicine is a great, is more true a specialty than any other specialty because even the common disease like leukoplakia or TM joint disease are not so common. So for you to develop expertise, it becomes even more difficult. You need to see more cases to develop that kind of expertise. So may, what the problem with oral medicine is that a lot of people who are getting into oral medicine are getting into it for the wrong reasons. Earlier, they would get into it because they would get an assured teaching job. Now they're getting into it because it's cheaper and less expensive and you get an MDS tag. These are not the reasons why you do an MDS. And some do it for radiology. Huh, some do it with the hope of radiology. With hope of? With the hope of radiology, radiology? getting into putting a CBCT center yes. or something of that sort. Right, but radiology and CBCT center has its, it's very interesting, but it's, it's limited because I often say the oral medicine and oral radiology are in some ways quite different branches. They are joined together and radiology is crucial in diagnosis. But in oral medicine, you are the expert. You are like Sherlock Holmes. You take up cases which the other police, Lestrades uh, and uh, Hawkins solve. don't solve. They come to you. Whereas uh, radiology, you are a dependent branch. You are a sidekick. The hero of the story is the clinician who is referring you a radiology case. Uh, whether he's an implantologist or a periodontist or a endodontist. And you just provide him a certain measurement or you give him an opinion and then you say clinically correlate and it's a clinician who is going to be the hero of the story. So a radiologist is always going to be a kind of side hero, whereas the oral physician, if he's really good, can be a superman. So to some extent, I find the superman part more interesting, interesting. or the consultant detective uh, more interesting than to be a side hero. So to that extent, oral medicine is more interesting and fascinating from my perspective. But of course, if somebody really is keen on radiology, I would say that they should take it because it's finally what is their interest. But radiology would also require them to be able to sit in a place and analyze images uh, with a kind of creativity. So uh, an innate creativity is required even in radiology. If you're not able to do that, you will just write reports. So you will not be able to add value to the clinician. You should be able to communicate to the clinician, find out what the clinician wants, Get feedback whether your radiology reports were good or not. Ultimately, one of our greatest learning is from our patients. One of the problems of both oral medicine and radiology in India is that we are very hesitant to take feedback. But every time I give a report or I treat a case, I usually call up my patients for years together to find out whether there's a recurrence. If there is a recurrence, what did they do? If they didn't come back to me, why did they not come back to me? And if they are fine, I have an idea that they have been fine for such a long time. But so, have you seen you dropouts? Need... A lot of people who would just see some amount of improvement and drop from the treatment. Oh, yes, there are dropouts, but they come back right back to you when they need you. So, you know, there are there are a certain percentage of dropouts, but there are a certain percentage of people who are so sincere and they follow up because usually and I treat a case of oral lichen planus. I tell them this this can last, this can treatment can last for a couple of years because. Uh, I may need to follow you up, even though I expect you to feel much better in, say, two or three months. But I may need to follow up, follow you up for two years. And people call out for two years. And then they continue to come once a year for another five years. So Great. Uh, if, if they sort of really are committed, they do follow. Some of them drop out because usually they are the poorer, less educated people are more likely to drop out because there is a cost in, involved uh, in every consultation. So even if I tell them, that I don't mind if you don't pay me. Usually they're a little hesitant. uncomfortable about it. Uh, hesitant. And then there's a the time and then priorities. So usually the poorer people, once they get a little better, they tend to drop out. But uh, most of the educated people who come to you, if you can explain to them the treatment plan, then there is a fair amount. I mean, I won't say 100%, but at least 50 to 50 odd percent, uh, very, very rigorous follow-up on what is happening. The others, we call them up. We ask them how you are. So we still get some data and we know that they are fine. So we know they are fine for three months or six months or one year. Of, of course, those who have not been regular with us, we don't follow up for too long, but we do have a follow-up with them as well. So follow-up is the key. 
both in oral medicine and in radiology and for that matter any specialty even as a dentist even as a periodontist i'm sure you would agree that unless yes. you know how well your treatment has worked over a period of time which cases worked and which didn't work what was the characteristics of these patients uh, there's no way you will be able to predict your your treatment so if you want to be confident and say this is what is going to happen you need data and that data will come from your own patients so basically the key to oral medicine is following up and being confident eventually yes okay <laughs> understood so uh, my one last question to you is what is your parting advice to the young dentists parting advice to young dentists is to first find out whether they really want to do dentistry because many times they get into dentistry because their parents wanted wanted them to join once they convince that dentistry is what they wish to do like i still although i love oral medicine i still love my dentistry so you must first love your dentistry once you decided you love your dentistry you must get as good as you can in that particular field i you don't need an mds to be a good dentist i can name you a no, long list of not just very very good dentists but very very successful dentists who have not got a qualification above pds so it's important for us to understand that a qualification or a certificate does not uh, guarantee that you're good uh, uh, be just a pds does not mean that you're not good but one characteristic which is common to all those people who have been successful is that they have had a passion to learn i have found and they have passion to for hard work so i have found that if anybody thinks that any of those big names in dentistry and you can name anybody you can name dr sandesh maikar dr ajit chetty any big name and some lesser known names say in local areas nobody has attained success without a lot of hard work so if you are not ready to put in hard work then unless you know lady luck smiles at you which is very rare there is no way you can get successful so you must be passionate about what you are doing you must be basically interested in what you are doing and you must be ready to really work hard and then you will be successful so and that's the sort of nutshell advice that i can give just one out of the box question i thought right now since you're the dean of the college have you seen any difference in the attitude of students over when you were a student the over the last 30 years or 40 years of teaching them and oh, yes there would be, yes there would be some changes in the attitude but some of these changes are purely teachers themselves getting a little old so every every generation of teachers feel that the next generation is less focused less competent less able but i am sure that this is not the complete truth uh, uh, life changes people change and so to that extent yes uh, we are having people who have far more distractions today uh, far more emotional health one big difference between uh, how people were in our times where uh, people had a greater ability to uh, face failure and rise above the failure they had more patience to continue to work to reach their sort of goal so these areas of uh, emotional health perhaps is not mentally and strong they have to be more basically uh, they are mentally strong they are ready to put in hard work ready to be patient i don't think that this generation is any less than our generation in fact it must be better the single point that i feel that they are inferior to us is that because probably they are living in nuclear families a little more protected environment a lot of technology a lot of advancement a lot of comforts coming very early in their life uh they in fact i find even today students coming from rural backgrounds you know are a little tired tired more sincere because they probably have not seen that kind of facility so to a certain extent your uh, emotional health if they can work on this right from their early years they can become more, more mentally strong yes they must learn how to fall and rise again so that that's a very crucial point for them and they must be ready to work hard and wait for success to come is somehow people are too much in a hurry they feel that you know the moment they start something they must sort of be a super duper star quick so success that's not going to happen yeah that, that that's not going to happen okay so it was really nice talking to you and i'm sure all the people who are listening and watching it might have got a lot of knowledge from it i thank you again for giving your time and being with us today 
I thank Kaizen Dental for this initiative and I thank you, Dr. Sridish, uh, friend, for this uh, opportunity to share my journey and my views. And I wish all the aspiring postgraduate students of dentistry and all the aspiring students in dentistry who might sometime or the other watch this video, uh, the best of luck for reaching their goals and their sort of realizing their dreams. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.